adventure began when you left the driveway, and that's what was neat about the Jeep and the teardrop. You became a part of the country from day one. You have that real commonality or that feel for the country when you're out in the open like this. You arrive not exhausted, but exhilarated, because you're already there, you're already on vacation. By the time you got there, you felt like you were out. And it was fun with the Jeep. It was always a talking point, a conversation piece, because no one was doing this in those days. Dad was always the engineer, very practical. He was the mechanic, he was the tour guide, making us feel like we were lost, because he really knew kind of where he was, but it was fun for him. Mom was the philosopher. She and I would talk ideas, and being in an environment like that, no better place to do that kind of thinking and that kind of dreaming. His dad taught me how to drive the Jeep and fix the Jeep. I set up the camp and he was the boss and that was fine. It was neat. We had a relationship that was pretty unique. He always called me pal and I always called him sir. And it made a real neat bond between us. It, it was really special. You could not go the places he wanted to go unless you had this. There were dirt roads, sandy roads, and a normal car would not make it. The Jeep could get him every place he wanted to go. Not like the rock crawling you see today, but get you back to the area, take a hike, pull off the road and camp anywhere you wanted to. And this little teardrop gave you supplies for several days off-road, and great for exploring the Southwest at a time when no one else was there. My name's Larry Shank, and today we've been driving a 1953 CJ3B. What's attached to it is a 1947 Kenskill teardrop trailer Model 10, which designates the actual length of it. Willys was actually built by Willys for World War II and got the nickname of Jeep during the war from the GIs. Willys continued to build these Jeeps as civilian models starting in 1946. After the war, this was it, the Willys Jeep for off-road travel. The Land Rover came later, but for Americans, it was a Willys Jeep. This particular model was built in 1953 and unique only because it's the first year with an overhead valve engine. So that's the designation which makes the 53 3B a little different. It was almost a tradition with him to change something every year and see if his friends could figure out what it was. So the biggest change was the V8 engine in 1955. Another addition, steering headlight. It steers with the front wheels, so when you're off the road, it will follow around the corners. You'll see on the dash of the Jeep, there's a straw grate. Well, that's a swamp cooler. You had a water tank, pumped water through the straw cooler, opened the vent, going across the desert, you got wet. So that was fun. And all the myriad of gauges. He just loved adding gauges. That was neat. The overdrive was a huge addition. Now having the 12 speeds, that was fabulous. He extended the body in the early 60s. We didn't use it for rock crawling, so the added room inside made a big difference. Those are probably the biggest additions that stand out to make really a unique vehicle, not an original CJ3B, but Dad's original with some real neat modifications from the 50s and 60s. The teardrop had been stored in the backyard, but it didn't require a full restoration. All I did on the skin is Ajax and a green scrubby and the paint on the fenders, Rust-Oleum. I refinished a little bit of the wood and left as much patina as I could. That maintained the character of the trailer, but I didn't want to do very much. I wanted to keep it in the spirit of Dad's original. I pretty well stripped the Jeep down and put it back together. Transmission, transfer case, the engine was still healthy. But everything in the Jeep I had to kind of take apart and put back together, which wasn't that difficult because I've been working on it with my dad my whole life. And put my name on the title when I became 18 years old and says, now you're responsible for this. Now you're going to help me maintain it. So that was a neat transition on that Jeep and why it's so important to me and always will be. unique to have something like this that brings you together. It's a way I think they both taught me, especially my father, about respect and responsibility because he let me be part of this. As a little boy, I'd sleep on the floor in the drove. And on the floorboard, the sound resonates. You could hear the gears, you could hear the motor. I virtually learned how to drive the Jeep by listening to how Dad drove. And also because as we drove, we were very aware of how the engine was running all the time to make sure you didn't have any mechanical problems, you weren't overheating. So as you drove, you actively watched the gauges. It was almost a game he played with me. 
that was a powerful engine for a very simple four-wheel drive. You had to drive it carefully so you didn't break anything, especially when you're in the middle of nowhere. So that was part of the whole learning process in the Jeep, learning to drive before I even drove. You know, I'm not even sure the road less traveled is that big a deal. What's important is that's the road we wanted to travel. The fact no one else was doing it didn't make any difference to Dad. Never entered his mind. This is what I want to do. Dad really enjoyed being in remote areas like that. He had a very focused job at Lockheed. He was a high-end electrical engineer during all of the post-war development of radars and modern jets. This was a complete break from that. It takes us back to the good old days. Anybody of my age group yearns for the days when it was simpler. After all these years with this rig, it's a part of me. It's never going to be sold. And I don't have a family to pass it on to. There are several people with small automotive museums or small trailer museums and sometimes big ones. That's the goal. Where can I gift it along with all the receipts, all the original photographs that will tell the story of the 50s and 60s and off-roading that I think is unique. Having this rig over all these years, it really kind of grounds you in what was really special about America and the Southwest in the 50s. And as I grew up in my age, the spirit of exploration, the spirit of what's next, very hopeful, very positive. It's nice to bring that tradition of not watching TV all the time, not having video games. You enjoy just being out and talking. Times around the campfire, you'd sit and talk and just watch the sunrise and the sunset. That's the kind of things that were really special about those trips. After these miserable days, you get to camp and everybody started having a great time. And after these long trips, your shorts are full of sand, you're hot and miserable, you're watching the sun go down, and you've got shots of vodka. The day becomes beautiful.